What's up, Make Pop Music? It's Austin here from Make Pop Music and Austin Hall Audio and Visual, and we are back with another video. And for today's video, we're going to be transforming this boring vocal. Oh, 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 oh. Into something that sounds like this. What's up everyone? As you probably saw in the title and from our little intro, we are going to be working on transforming a raw, clean vocal sound. And that could be a vocal sample that you have, a vocal that you record, or a little vocal chop that you've already chopped and screwed. And we're going to be talking about how to process that to add a little bit of depth and ambience and really make it something that can sit in your mix and not sound quite like a vocal, but it still gives it a little bit of that organic touch. This was requested after our video last week. We had a similar vocal in there and you guys wanted to see how to process it. So today I'm going to walk you through some of my tips, tricks, and methods for actually transforming a vocal vocal into a vocal chop like this. Without further ado, let's actually go in and hop in. But before you do that, if you do like this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It helps the channel out a ton, and we really, really appreciate all the love and support. But without further ado, let's actually hop in and see what we can do with this vocal. All right, so here's what we have just tracked in. So again, you can use a vocal sample if you have a vocal chop that you've already made. By the way, if you want to know how to actually chop up a vocal take and kind of make those like jumpy EDM style chops. We'll link to a video that we did uh, like a year ago over here on how to actually create a vocal chop. This is more so how to create a different kind of vocal texture using a chop, using a tracked vocal or something like that. So if you want to know the method of actually chopping a vocal, go check that video before you come back and check this one out. But let's go ahead and listen to the raw clean vocal that we have. Oh. So when I'm doing stuff like this, I prefer to honestly just hum it as is. And um, by the time I do all of the effects and the processes, it's not going to sound much like a human vocal anyway. So instead of me going in and chopping up a bunch of stuff, unless that's the specific style of chop I'm going for, I typically just like to kind of sing it how I want. And then if I need to go in and adjust notes, I can do that in very audio or Melodyne or Autotune. So for right now, we have that. I'm just going to go ahead and throw on Autotune Pro. For one, this is just going to make sure that we don't have any pitch drifting. And then for two, later we might kind of want to work with this transpose or the throat length. So now we have something like this. Oh, 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 oh. The next thing that I like to do when I'm working on some kind of like chopped vocal is just kind of get it out to the side. I don't really want a mono vocal. I want something that's going to be a little wide and atmospheric. So if you're working specifically in Cubase, just make sure that even if you have a mono vocal that was recorded mono, you're working on a stereo track so you can kind of see that determined right here because if you start using stereo effects on a mono track, it's just gonna collapse them down to the center. So we have a stereo track with that mono vocal on it, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and pick a preset that I know I love. It's just this doubler for voices. Kind of gives me this chorusy, phasey effect, splits it out to the side, and that normally does everything I want. So if you don't have that tool, you can just use any kind of chorus or phaser or doubler anything like that that's going to kind of spread it out. Once I double it, the next thing that I like to do is add some saturation. And typically I'll use something like Decapitator or like the tube in Cubase, or I'll just use some kind of guitar amp. Um, you can really use whatever kind of distortion and saturation you want, and you can do this to the effect that you want. So normally I will just kind of pump the drive up. I'll go ahead and cut some of those lows out because I don't want those to get super saturated and I'll go ahead and cut some of these highs out. So I'll leave it like that for now. I don't want to do too, too much. Depending on how much reverb and delay and stuff we add, I might pull that back in. So the next thing I'll go ahead and add is a little bit of reverb to give me some space. I like to just use any reverb that'll work in stereo. For this, I'm going to use Pro R because it's super clean and it's super easy for me to kind of demonstrate with. So we have this. All right, so I'll drag that mix back to like 50%. I don't want it too, too wet because I know that it still needs to be intelligible. And then I'm going to drive the space up because I do want something kind of shimmery and kind of long. Make sure that stereo width is out. And I don't mind it being a little livelier and chorusy. And I'm going to just filter out some of these highs and lows, make that decay time better. And that should be good. <laughs> All right, so now we're getting that ambience. I think I wanna go ahead and add some kind of delay and I'll honestly probably drag that before the reverb. Always remember that the order of which you're doing everything in your signal chain definitely matters. So I want the delayed sound to also hit that reverb. So I'm gonna do it before. So I'm just gonna pick like a ping pong quarter note 
and then filter some of it out. Do something like that. And then the next thing that I like to do is once I get it kind of in the space that I like is really just filter it out. And this is very particular on the track at hand and kind of the vibe you're going for. But typically I'll just do like a high pass and a low pass and kind of give me some of these mids to work with. That sounded pretty good to me. And then the next thing you can do is you can either sidechain it adding something like kickstart. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll kind of just put it out a half note. So that gives us that cool kind of swelly vibe. Um, we'll also do another little side chaining here in a second. But one thing that I like to play around with once I have that general sound is kind of mess with formant control or throat control. Um, so in autotune specifically, the higher the number is, it'll kind of get that like really chesty kind of gnarly sound. Let me turn everything off but that so you can kind of hear that working. Oh. So we kind of have like the monster sound at 180 and we kind of have like that like squeaky alien sound at 50. So I'm gonna actually take it down because I feel like that could give us a, a cool little bit of texture and just kind of get it out of the way of a main vocal when we do have a vocal come in. So let's try that at like 160. Yeah, that kind of just takes away that like nasaliness from the hummed line and it just kind of gives it a little bit more atmosphere as something like a pad or like a synth lead would have. And that feels a lot better right there. So right now we have this just side chained with kickstart. It's not really side chained by anything. It's more so just like an LFO opening. What you could do though, is we have a kick coming in in a second. So what we could do is we could actually make a duplicate of this kick track. And I'm gonna call this ghost kick side chain and We'll make sure that we have this going. And then what I like to do is if I'm gonna ghost trigger a side chain is I'll just send it to no bus. So that way it's not gonna make any sound. And it sounds like this. It sounds like nothing, but you can see there's still signal coming. Um, let me go ahead and turn off these side chains that I had just from duplicating that kick because I don't want it to trigger those. But I do want it to trigger this vocal chop right here. So what we're gonna do is I'll just go ahead and mute kickstart because we don't really need that at the moment. And in Cubase, I just always pretty much sidechain with their stock compressor if I'm doing something just for movement. If I'm sidechaining it because it needs to actually like, you know, get out of the way of an element, maybe I'll use a different compressor. But for this, this typically works fine. And I'm gonna go with something pretty aggressive. So I'll go ahead and drag this threshold way down, drag the ratio way up so we have something super hard, almost limited. And then we'll kind of just mess with this release time. you can kind of hear it ducking under that ghost kick. I'll go ahead and solo it so you can kind of, you'll, you'll see it trigger. And that's how you go ahead and side chain if you want a little bit more movement that's not just four on the floor. So I feel pretty good about that as like the main element. So let's go ahead and listen in the full context of the mix. And then what I like to do a lot of the time is once I get the vocal chop feeling pretty much how I want it, I'll go ahead and duplicate it and I'm gonna name this vocal chop high. You can also do this if you wanna pitch it low, but typically what I'll do is I'll come into autotune. I'll just turn the formant off, I don't need that because I'm gonna drag it up 12 semitones. And then typically what I'll do is I'll just pick a different doubler setting to make sure that it's not going to uh, cause any weird issues with just being in the same exact area. And then typically I'll just filter this a bit more to kind of get some of those highs out. Let me make sure this compressor is still sending to that extra kick. And then the compressor setting should be the same because I just duplicated the track. So now it is still being triggered by that same side chain. So now we have both of these put together. And remember, if we want, we can turn on kickstart and not do the compressor. And it'll just kind of give us that four on the floor movement. And 
And then typically once I have something that I'm really, really feeling, I'll go ahead and I'll render it in place. That way I can chop it up and do whatever I need to do. So I'll pull up my render settings. I wanna make sure that I'm doing channel settings. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and name this stacked vocal chop and make sure that I'm gonna mix down to one audio file. And this is gonna print it with everything on it to A, save my CPU, but also, as you can hear, there's a lot of reverb tail and a lot of delay tail from this, which I really, really like for the ambience, but especially if we have a vocal coming in or like chorus elements coming in and we wanna continue this, I like to have the ability to go ahead and chop some of that extra stuff out where I need it, rather than having to go in and automate it a million times. I just find like it's a little bit easier to actually print it and go ahead and work with the printed audio file that has all of the sound just baked into it. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we have here. So let me go ahead and route this back to the vocals. So see like right here, I could go ahead and chop this because I don't feel like I need that. And then I can kind of fade this in. So now we have something like this. And I can go ahead and get rid of this too because there's kind of like a little glitch. Let's try that now. And then you could even get really, really crazy and let's say I wanna take all of this out right here. And let's say I'm just gonna copy this and paste this right here. And then let's go ahead and in Cubase, you can just transpose right here. So I'm gonna do something kind of weird just to see how it works. I probably wouldn't use this, but just to kind of show you what you can do with actually chopping it once you've added all these cool effects. And uh, that's just, you know, a few ideas on how you can go ahead and process something like a raw vocal. And to me, the options definitely don't stop there. You can do kind of whatever chorus, whatever phaser, whatever flanger. But typically, the kind of baseline process for me is get a clean vocal, get it all tuned up how you want it, whether that's chopping it or actually singing it and tuning it. And then once you have that, it's really a process of adding a little bit of width, adding a little bit of saturation just for some color and some texture. So anything like decapitator, um, a guitar pedal, anything to add some distortion. Once I have some distortion and some width, I like to go ahead and add a little bit of space with some reverb and some delay. And then once I have the wetness feeling right, I'll kind of filter it all in to where it's not taking up too much of a frequency spectrum. And then once I have all of that, I'll decide what I want the movement to be doing. So I'll either side chain it or I'll use something like Kickstart to just add like an LFO for a little bit of movement, or I'll just print it as is and then go ahead and manually chop it up like this. And then you can kind of do whatever you need, but that's just a typical process of me for, you know, taking a clean vocal and turning it into a chop that you'd hear out of something like Arcade or like a splice loop. And there we have it. That's how I like to go about transforming a raw, kind of pretty boring vocal into something that I can use in a track as a pad element or a lead element or some texture. Uh, there's just a lot of different things you can do. Again, remember that you can kind of pick and choose different techniques that we used in this video. Maybe you don't want the distortion. Maybe you don't want to pitch it up or down. Maybe you do want to pitch it up or down. You can kind of mix and match these things to give yourself the style and the kind of taste that you want. However, I just wanted to kind of throw the kitchen sink at you give you all the ideas that way you can kind of transform a vocal however you see fit for your actual track but if you like this video please make sure you like comment and subscribe comment down below and let us know what videos you want to see in the future because that helps us gain ideas for you guys and then if you want to support the channel you can head over to our website makepopmusic.com where you can check out all of our other content we have free and paid content over there we've got sample packs courses free samples and presets that we've given out we've got some blog posts over there so definitely head over to makepopmusic.com and check all of that out right now but that's going to be it for this week's video until next Next time we will see you guys later much love everyone and peace out <laughs>